Uh, well, as you can see, I am uh, here in West Virginia. Not really. Uh, this is Vail Pass in Colorado on I-70 right on the border of Summit and Eagle County. Came through this pass once last fall and uh, it just gotten its first major snow and this is probably uh, it's still got about four or five feet so I don't think uh, I don't think summer's just about here yet but we'll see. Uh, so after I posted last night uh, my boss called me. No, he didn't call me. He sent me an email. Basically, he wants me to manage, basically, I think all of his operations. I'm not sure. Um, so I'm driving across the country right now, so that's something I'll be thinking about. Um, but I got another couple messages about Bitcoin. People have been <laughs> asking me to do a Bitcoin video for a long time. And I've been very reluctant, and I've told people that I really don't know that much about Bitcoin. Um, I'm not a Bitcoin expert and, uh, Bitcoin deals with areas that I'm really not even a novice that I'm, I'm basically not completely, but nearly completely ignorant about. Um, also not a lot has changed in my view about Bitcoin since the video I posted last summer. My first vi Bitcoin video I posted last summer, right after Porkfest. And, um, you know, I haven't really learned anything since then. There have obviously been enormous developments, but I think that they were developments that have had predictable effects. I'm not saying that developments themselves were predictable, although they weren't necessarily very unlikely. Um, I, I recommend, because all, all my understanding of Bitcoin pretty much is going to come from uh, the question and answer panel discussion on Bitcoin that was held at Porkfest. So if you are interested in seeing that, I would highly recommend, I know it's on video, somebody recorded it, it's on YouTube. Just type uh, 2012 uh, Porkfest Bitcoin Symposium or Bitcoin Panel or whatever. I've, I've watched parts of it. I know it's there. Um, and I was present when they when they filmed that. And that's basically where I'm getting all my information. Now, people are asking me because the price of Bitcoins has just increased enormously. Like I, People were started talking in a big way when it, when it crested $90 an hour. And I just checked my, my Bitcoin app on my, my smartphone yesterday and it was at $116 and I am surprised that it has risen that much. Now, first of all, uh, we always have to qualify that whenever prices change, uh, whether it's the price of a particular good or the purchasing power of a money, um, it's impossible to tell how much of the change is from one side of the transaction or the other. So, are bitcoins going up or are dollars and other currencies going down? And there's kind of a reciprocal relationship where kind of both can happen. And how much of one is, I think, impossible to know. Um, I mean, you can say, yeah, maybe they print 20% more dollars and maybe the, the you know, there's a, an exact 20% change in the, in the relative value of the two. But even then, there's other counter cyclical considerations. What about? you know, prices of other consumer goods. It's just, it's, it's very hard to say, not very hard. I think it's impossible to say for certain how much is causing what. Uh, that being said, clearly uh, other currencies are having problems. And also there's a fear of government control over people's wealth. And that means that anything that can provide some kind of safeguard against that potentiality uh, suddenly becomes more marketable. It becomes more valuable. And that is specifically what Bitcoins are designed to do. And so it's not surprising, you know, I wouldn't be surprised if a large portion of this uptick in, in, in the price and the relative value is demand from say Cyprus or people reacting to what has happened in Cyprus. So people are worried that uh, the government will seize their assets and bitcoins, as far as I'm aware, is very difficult to do that. And so 
that makes sense for and even though we're talking probably only talking a, a tiny margin of the population it's enough to increase the pop the the price relative to other currencies enormously which is apparently what's been happening um bitcoin is an extremely interesting phenomenon it was by far the most interesting lecture uh that i saw at Porkfest. um most of the fair at Porkfest was pretty oh yeah, you've kind of heard that sort of thing before. There were other things that were more stimulating. That was very, very, um, very interesting. Now, libertarians find more to debate about Bitcoin than just about anybody else. Uh, there is enormous debate about whether Bitcoin is or is not uh, something that refutes the so-called regression theorem of money. Basically, Menger and Mises, I think it's originally to Menger, but uh, Mises obviously um, built on it, was the idea that Money had to have start started as an account as some kind of commodity that had a non-monetary value. So, gold and silver didn't start as coins. They started probably as decorative ornamentation, or ornamentation. They were valuable to people because you could ornament yourself with iron. You know, very few iron coins because it's always been relatively abundant. But you know, irons, an iron-based money, iron is 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 useful outside of money. When we talk about tobacco. Uh, whatever it is, and and you know even our paper money, they were initially substitutes. They were fiduciary media. They were uh, money substitutes for actual gold and silver. And so lots of lots of libertarians have said, well, does this prove that Mises was wrong? Mises and Menger are wrong that you don't need because if Bitcoin's money, then then how is that is that break you know um, n not matching the regression theorem? And of course, since the Austrian school of economics, and especially someone like Mises. Menger's not really that famous so much, but um, you know the two deservedly kind of are linked in a way. There's a real, there's a kind of hesitancy, like, oh, is this this proving something we really believe in, a principle that we really foundationally think? And so there's a lot of I think there are some people who, for that reason, are just going to say that it for however however it does not violate the regression principle. However. You know, they're just not going to believe it. Other people are going to say, okay, so the Austrians are wrong about something. I actually think that a strong argument can be made that uh, Bitcoin doesn't violate the regression theorem because Bitcoin represents something that um, it represents basically uh, cryptographied. Was that a word? Um, uh, codified, hidden data that can be uh, encrypted. Uh, data streams that can be encrypted, and that's something that's valuable outside of currency. If I were to come and say, "Hey, I have a, I have a, a zip drive here, and it's got, you know, the ability to transmit an enormous amount of data, um, you know, in a way that can't be read, would that be valuable? Um, probably not necessarily super valuable, but it would have a certain, it would be worth something. Um, and so, Bitcoin, I think, is that it's a data stream, it's it's data before it's a, a currency. Although it was created with the idea of it being used as a currency, something was created, uh, a, a technological thing that was created that um, you know isn't necessarily money. My bitcoins have never been used as money so far. Um, so there, that, that's a big part of the debate with bitcoins. Um, now, I have to admit... Um, you know, I, I think most of the stimulus for people asking about this is under the surface is people want to know, should they get in and buy Bitcoins? And I'm not a financial advisor. And, um, you know, I, I'm really hesitant to say that you should or you shouldn't, because that, that involves questions about what you have at your disposal. If you're, if you're really poor, and I know I have subscribers who don't have much or any disposable income, I'm not sure it makes sense to start putting money into bitcoins they have relatively high liquidity but you know these ups and downs and it's been mostly ups no doubt i there's a degree of uncertainty that i i'm not sure that i can just say ignore that um i went in i think i spent i think i went in like a hundred dollars at pork fest something like that and of course now it's almost 10 times that value uh and just what now it's about 10 months, nine, 10 months. Uh, I know, and this is one of the things I speculated in the Bitcoin video. Um, there are lots of libertarians who are in Bitcoin in a big way, who got in before me, who got in bigger than me, 
And I am not a big, I'm not a Bitcoin player. It was just kind of like a fun thing to buy at Porkfest. Um, if I had to go back, I would have taken all the silver that I brought, which is probably a hundred ounces, and I would have uh, put all of it in Bitcoin. That's totally hindsight, uh, because if that had happened, I would be sitting on <laughs> a lot of money right now, um, a lot of coin. Uh, that's hindsight, but I know people who got into it in a big way. I know a YouTuber who has a lot in Bitcoin, and at this point, he's probably in a position where he could... <laughs> I don't know what he could do. Um, I speculated that if if Bitcoin ever, and this you can see this, I'm not predicting this. I'm just saying logically, if 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 Bitcoin were to supplant the U.S. dollar as the world reserve currency, which is not something I'm saying is going to happen or about to happen, I'm saying it's something that hypothetically could happen. If that were to take place, those people who got into Bitcoin early in a big way would become wealthy, and I don't just mean wealthy. I mean like Rothschild, Rockefeller wealthy i mean um in in relative terms they would be multi-billionaires hypothetically even trillionaires i'm not kidding that's the that is something i consider a possibility i don't think it's particularly likely especially in the short in the in the short run there are there are i think that bitcoin is not perfect and here and here's where my qual I, this is what i qualify all my stuff with bitcoin with there's a level of technical information and knowledge necessary to critically assess Bitcoin that I don't have. Um, so I have asked people, and the proponents are, are adamant that it is a very, very secure system. And I have looked and found um, there have been some magazine articles like in Wired where other programmers who are not libertarians, who are not proponents of Bitcoin, have looked at it and they've said it's a very, very secure system, that it would be very, very difficult to, to um, counterfeit. Uh, you know, and so I, I'm confident that it's, it's, it's a, you know, pretty secure thing, but I am not technically knowledgeable enough to know that with certainty. And so any, any, any advocacy I make for it has to have that qualification that geez, there's stuff about it that I just don't know. And so that uncertainty, which is present in everything. I don't know about gold. They could invent a way to, you know, replicate gold tomorrow and all of a sudden your gold won't be worth very much. Uh, or we could all die or whatever. Uh, you know, with Bitcoin, there's even more uncertainty. I'm not making that to sound like it's a totally, uh, you know, huge risk that you're basically playing Russian roulette. I, I don't know. I don't think it's that risky. If you have disposable income and you're interested, by all means, get into it. Um and you know you're you, in terms of act directly using it you don't have tons of options other than selling it but uh, not yet anyway but that's slowly changing i think um you know the the concern that governments are going to control put not wage and price controls but capital controls currency controls is what's kind of spiking the demand for bitcoins and i think it's also a good indication if they could be created out of thin air, you know, and which they are, they're they're kind of built, but there's a finite amount that will be created. Uh, then the price wouldn't really go up. More would have just been created, and you know, there would have been Bitcoin um, inflation, so to speak, beyond the natural level. This is a big debate among even people who believe in gold and silver. Is that mean gold mining? You know, the people in the show Gold Rush are they are they committing inflation, um, you know, against against everybody because they're increasing the gold stock. And I know Guido Hulsman in his book, The Ethics of Money Production, which is probably the only book that explicitly deals with this topic, and it's a good book and I recommend it. Um, you know, he kind of, it's kind of a cop-out, but he says there's a natural level of production. Uh, we're talking about artificial creation basically by the state. You know, he's an anarchist, so he's going to say if the state's doing it, it's bullshit. And that's true, but I don't know how rigorous intellectually that is. <laughs> um, there's a matriculation and creation of bitcoins that's set at a certain rate and the fact that that rate has not been able to match demand is why its purchasing power has increased so dramatically at least relative to the dollar i haven't checked what it is relative to say the euro that would be really interesting um you know but i think people in cyprus who are deciding to buy bitcoins isn't necessarily going to change it relative to the euro it's, it might change it more to the dollar i don't know i don't know um 
like it's a, it's an interesting development it's also kind of the fulfillment of the predictions that many libertarians have been making i think ad nauseum there's there's becoming a growing awareness that how many times can you say there's going to be inflation you know eventually it will happen uh and then it's really hard to say that you're really prophetic because you've been saying it all along <laughs> yeah i think that's a valid criticism but not necessarily a a um a totally totally uh totally killing the argument so uh, i'm sorry this is a little rambly i've got a lot of my eye and i'm squinting and I'm wishing I could just spend a lot of time in this past. Just look at this. Jeez. I flew over this area. I flew from Denver to Grand Junction yesterday. And you can you can see I-70. It was a nice enough day. You could see I-70. And you can see this entire trip. And it's just... If you ever get the chance to make the drive from Denver to Grand Junction, or vice versa, it's just... It is incredible. Um, I haven't seen a more consistently scenic route and there's other, I mean, there's lots of cool places in Utah and Wyoming and God knows other places that I haven't been, I'm sure. But from what I've seen, this is just incredible. Uh, maybe it's cause I'm a lowlander and from an area that, uh, not only doesn't have mountains, certainly, I mean, it doesn't, it doesn't just not have snow capped mountains. It doesn't have mountains, period. There's no mountains in Michigan. There's things that have that name, which would be not even considered hills in most places. So this is very, this is still new to me, even though I've been kind of working out here off and on for a couple months now, a couple years even. Um, really, really, I don't want to leave this rest up, but I got places I got to go. Uh, life tours ahead. I will upload this video whenever I get a hotel room tonight. Um, let's see, I wanted to keep it pretty brief. Like I said, I'm not an expert on Bitcoin. Uh, if you have disposable income and you're interested, I don't see why not. Um, bit instant. There's a just type. Uh, you know, if you start doing Google searches, there's lots of websites that will coach you on how to buy. I had trouble. I, I will complain this. I, I bought them at, at Porkfest, and a few times since then, I've been in the position where you know I think I want to put another hundred dollars. I never wanted to put thousands and thousands of dollars, but you know maybe another hundred, maybe two hundred, something like that. And I had a very hard time finding a place to do it. You can't actually do it online. Um, you got to find somebody and pay them. Uh, or, you know, you can do it over your phone. Oh, there's a snowball fight going on. Hmm. How aggressive. They're not libertarians. They're violating the NAP. Um, but that's kind of like the virtue of it is that it's, it, you can't have them on demand, which means they don't inflate to nothing. Uh, so, uh, I guess if I, if I had to tell you, since I don't see prices increasing nearly as much relative to Bitcoin, then this must be a surge in demand. And since its supply cannot, since it has a basically an inelastic supply, uh, that means its purchasing power per unit is going up. Oh, another thing. Somebody said, oh, I, now I can't get into Bitcoins. They've gone way too up in much in price. Now, that's one of the virtues about Bitcoins is uh, they're not infinitely divisible, but they, they get divisible down to like 9 or 10 or 10. 12 decimal points so you could still buy one penny's worth of bitcoins and you know if you pot one penny's worth of bitcoins um you know at the outset you'd have a dollar now so uh you know there's no there's no reason that you can't get into them because you're really really poor you can take your loose change and if you have someone who who sells them you can buy them i don't know practically how how effective that is but theoretically it, it's possible um Unlike, you know, gold and silver, you can get the one milligram shit, but that's, I mean, usually you want to buy coins. I refused to buy gold until I could buy one ounce coins. And of course that, that kind of prevented me from getting any until not too long ago. Um, you know, if I put that money, I put into gold and bitcoins, man, that's totally hindsight. Uh, I don't know if there are any investments that could show that kind of an increase over that short of a time. I mean, let's see how my, my investment's only nine, 10 months old. Um, and you know, I'm, you, you buy high, but so what you can, you can spend the same amount and you'll just get half as many Bitcoins. That's all. Um, so I don't know what else to say. I mean, people keep, I, this is, people have been requesting this like crazy and I've always told them, I don't know that much about Bitcoin. You need to talk to a computer programmer or some of the guys at BitInstant, um, Ira and whatever their names are. There's a guy, he's Dutch. 
Uh, he's got a Dutch last name. Some of them are subscribers of mine. I don't, I don't think they watch very often, so they probably won't even see this. But uh, I have enough confidence in Bitcoin that I am willing to put money into it. I don't see it as a be-all and end-all. I have diversified investments, uh, and I will continue to be that way. Uh, but it is very interesting and telling. I don't know how secure it is. And part of my fear, even if Bitcoin can't be faked, I wouldn't be surprised if it would be able to have counterfeit Bitcoins that they're not really Bitcoins, but since people need some kind of technological knowledge, it's kind of difficult for them to necessarily assess that. And then we could have the market flooded with, you know, they don't really stand up to scrutiny, but Bitcoins that, um, you know, it, and that would make it, that would make it difficult to exchange them because you'd always have, well, is this really a Bitcoin? But, you know, I think that's true with paper money too. So I don't know if it really that's a fair criticism. So other than people are just used to, people are used to just accepting paper money. And even when they accept counterfeit, they don't really even, it doesn't even really bother them. If they have this suspicion that the potential buyer person who's going to give them money, Bitcoins are, that they're fake, then they're less likely to use them, which means there'll be less demand. That's what I think is probably the big fear. I also do think that governments have been, and I said this in the previous video, consistently underestimating the potential threat Bitcoin poses to them. And I don't, I don't think I, I like, I don't like giving any people ideas, but I mean, if they can't think of it, if they hadn't thought of it already, then they're too stupid to implement. Look, they're talking about it. Oh, it's drug laundering, blah, blah, blah. No, the potential of Bitcoin is to essentially obliterate the fiat currency. Uh, the monopoly currency of the government. And that would be, I mean, that might be the single most threatening thing um, to the government. There are other things, and they'd still have other options. They'd still have all their guns and all that, although what they would be paying their people with, you know, that becomes hazardous. They'd have to probably make their currency better, uh, which would be kind of an interesting take on governments competing with, with the market and having positive externalities as a result. Um, I think that they're way behind the curve on this. You know, this is something that geeky libertarians, and I, and I said this in the video, um, you know, watching the Bitcoin lecture, you had all these geeky libertarians, these nerds basically up on there. Some of them were pretty good looking, but, you know, nerds nonetheless sitting up on the podium. And then you've got people in the audience with guns. You've got Boston Tea Party. You've got militia members. You've got people in the Appleseed Foundation and, and weightlifters and, you know, ninjas and, so to speak, and and yet the the nerds are probably more threatening and dangerous to the government than all the martial skill that one could even um, begin to talk about. At least that was my that was my realization at the at the conference. I think that's still possible, and I think uh, recent developments they don't necessarily prove that, but they don't uh, they 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 it's further indication uh, at least anecdotally that that's possible so anyway i don't mind i don't want to run my battery out um 23 minutes i thought it was going to be short but that's it and uh i'll talk to y'all later